How did Donald Trump flip a state that hadn't voted for a Republican for president in a generation? As election day dawned on November 8, 2016, Donald Trump was still campaigning in Michigan. A late night rally in Grand Rapids had started just after midnight. If we win Michigan, we will win this historic election. And then we truly will be able to do all of the things we want to do. Democrats and most pollsters consider the state a lock for Hillary Clinton. But Donald Trump decided to fight for every last vote, and he proved them wrong. Office of President of the United States. Donald Trump showed up in Michigan in a big way. He blanketed the state with events and rallies in the primary and general election campaigns. Hillary Clinton was later criticized for not giving Michigan enough attention. From the outside, we can only look at that and say, they took Michigan for granted. And to some extent, you can't blame them. For years, Michigan was reliably democratic at the presidential level, even though there are definite signs outside of that. We've had Republican governors, majorities in the state House and state Senate that are Republicans. Michigan hadn't voted for a Republican for president since George H.W. Bush in 1988. But Trump's time here paid off. In a state with more than 7 million registered voters, he won by just 10,704 votes. It's a matter of turnout. It's a matter of message. It's a matter of speaking to voters in a way that really resonates with them. To understand how Trump won Michigan, we need to understand places like Atlanta. Atlanta is the unincorporated county seat of Montmorency County, which had some of the highest percentage of Michigan Trump voters in the 2016 primaries and general election. The people are good here. They'll help you out anytime you need any help. We know our neighbors. You can leave the house and not lock the door. People in Atlanta love the outdoors. They love to come to the shop and have coffee. Sometimes it's politics, sometimes it's what's going on, you know, within the town. Up here, many people distrust the establishment and politics as usual. They were looking for someone to drain the swamp. Don Roy teaches concealed pistol license classes at the gun shop in town. The Second Amendment and gun rights rank high on our list of voting priorities. One of the reasons why I did vote for Trump is how he communicated with people. Very strong, very matter of fact. When we've had past Democrat presidents, there's been talk of, you know, taking certain rights away. Veterans, I know, also have a concern, making sure that they still have their medical. And President Trump definitely supports the veterans. Up north, Trump got people to come out and vote for him in ways that Republicans hadn't in decades. In 2016, different people that had come into our shop said that this was going to be the first time they had voted in many years because they didn't think that their vote would matter, but they want to make sure that Trump got in to make their vote matter. But it wasn't just rural voters who came out for Trump. You've heard of Eminem's 8 Mile. The road is the border between Wayne County, which is home to the city of Detroit, and Macomb County to the northeast. Macomb County's political character gets a lot of attention. It's home to the so-called Reagan Democrats, working class voters who switched from blue to red to help elect Ronald Reagan in 1980. They also helped Trump. Many of them were, I like Reagan because he seems like a strong leader. He does what he says. He's going to be tough. Fast forward to 2016, and a very similar dynamic is at play. Donald Trump came in and spoke our language. He promised us that he would fight for us and have our concerns at the top of his priority list, and he's done exactly that. Brian Panabecker founded the group Auto Workers for Trump 2020. I'm an auto worker, I'm a forklift driver, been working for Ford for 23 years. A lot of conservative people would vote Democrat because the unions told them that it was in their best interest. Well, over the last 15 or 20 years, I think a lot of conservative workers realize the Democrat Party does not represent them anymore. So I want to let the people who live in this community know the blue collar workers in the auto industry support Donald Trump. He came here and talked about getting out of NAFTA, getting the United States out of bad trade deals like the Trans-Pacific Partnership. The message resonated with folks who felt left behind by the Democratic Party, that felt that they had not been talked to in a long time. 
Trump reinvigorated the Reagan Democrats that have always been in, in uh, Macomb County. He gave them a reason to vote Republican again. It was Trump or the same old thing we've been having for the last 50, 60 years. There's four UAW plants within one mile of this location. All of them supported President Trump in 2016. They're going to support him again in 2020. Whether or not Trump maintains his momentum with the blue-collar workers of Macomb County could be a major factor in the 2020 presidential election. But Michigan is a big state with diverse rural, urban, and suburban communities with their own unique cultural and political makeup, and no one part of the state is uniformly red or blue. Even in Atlanta, we found a voter proudly displaying his disdain for Donald Trump. I voted for Hillary. I probably would have voted for anybody but Trump. I worked cleaning up sites of contamination in northeastern Michigan and who they appoint for the EPA and who they appoint for the HUD and all that. <sighs> Looking back over the past 18 presidential elections, Michigan is evenly split, voting for nine Democrats and nine Republicans. So what will happen in 2020? The outcome of the 2020 presidential election depends on who the Democrats nominate. It is an entirely different race if it's Joe Biden, Cory Booker, or Kamala Harris. Such a range of people. There could be any number of outcomes. The 2018 midterms were a win for Michigan Democrats. Nationally, no blue wave. But there was a lot of localized flooding. And that was certainly the case here in Michigan, where Democrats, they won everything, right? In the governor's mansion, secretary of state, attorney general, they pick up five seats in the state house and the state senate. They have terrific success. With its status as a swing state firmly in place, Michigan will be bombarded by presidential candidates and campaign ads in the run-up to the 2020 election. It's already a crucial stop on the campaign trail for Democrats running for president. And Donald Trump isn't taking the state for granted. Thank you very much, Grand Rapids. It's great to be back. After the president's narrow victory in 2016, it could once again all come down to who gets voters out to the polls. Yes, I will definitely be voting for Donald Trump in 2020. Everybody here is voting for Trump, I know that. If they want to run on a socialism versus capitalism agenda, bring it. We are going to win Michigan again for Donald Trump, and Macomb County is the key. From small towns like Atlanta to metropolitan areas like Macomb County, political tensions are boiling across our country. While we don't know what the 2020 election has in store, it's safe to say Michigan will get a lot of attention during the campaign. You can take a closer look at President Trump's relationship with Michigan at MLive.com slash how we got here. And remember, your vote counts. <laughs>